Wanted to do a little tour of the propagation house. Uh, I have done a little bit of an explanation about the structure itself, so I'm mostly just going to be talking about what's going on with the plants at this time of year. This is a um, mobile air prune bed. Old defunct, more or less defunct little trailer where the sides go down and out. So when these chestnuts have grown up at the end of the season, hopefully they get two feet tall or so. I can just fold the sides down, harvest everything. And I've got lots of um, pallets with cardboard underneath them for our hardening off spaces right outside the prop house. These are all different kinds of seedlings, all really hard to germinate, mostly all hard to germinate seed that I stratified all winter. And not everything here, some, some, some are random stuff annuals. Um, that's Nicotinia alata and Rustica, but so many cool things here. Sochan, Carragena arborescens, wild quinine, wild licorice, sea berries, Amelanchia on the folia. I don't even remember half the stuff that's in there. Lots of things. These are the cuttings that are now rooting out in pots. And so this is the complexity of having a vegetable farm and a nursery at the same time. In this row, straight ahead, we've got potted apricots, which are going to be for sale shortly. Some peaches in there. Then we've got basil that's going to be cut for the farmer's markets. Then tomatoes, which are going to be harvested for the farmer's markets. Then flats of basil, which are going to be sold as potted plants at the farmer's markets. Then rosemary, which we sell um, cut bunches more trays tomatoes basil walkway more plant cell stuff parsley tomatoes and then up on the side there's all the bench space it's sort of mixed right now but it's primarily for uh, field crops eggplants Greenhouse tomatoes, random stuff I'm working on right now, peppers, more cuttings hardening off here, and lettuces and cold crops, and then this is just fig haven. Um, all the figs that I grow come from cuttings from these plants, Chicago hardy in the back, and then this other white one in front. Um, and then I got some random tropicals, Musa Baju, the cold hardiest banana of all in its fifth year of being in the greenhouse, which hopefully I'll be able to propagate enough to sell some cuttings this year. And a couple other cool plants in here in that category of stuff that may be able to survive in different locations, maybe zone six, seven. This is that many hot gramnii which in an unheated greenhouse only died back a little bit and uh, is probably, I'm thinking, gonna come back fairly healthily. It looks pretty alive to me. We'll see what happens. And then um, this is yoga ginger, hardy ginger, edible flowers, musabaju propagation. A couple other random things, but um, that's just a little tour of how tightly packed things have become in here. Every sort of square inch is being used. The Under the bench space, um, I've got coffee growing there for no particular reason. And all of these are communally sown seeds from stratification that are just popping up right now. Sort of exploding, actually. The sea berries are kind of ludicrous there's so many under there I let them come through here um, these are all different kinds of things ash trees compass plant um, chufa just lots of different things bronze fennel lupine all kinds of plants that interest me with some of them germinate some of them don't and then I'll either plant them directly outside or pot them up like this. 
and this process is, is really not that time consuming. I mean, it is time consuming in one sense, but in terms of the certainty of having plants in trays, you know they're there, you're not waiting for the seed to come up outside in a bed that you forget about, which I do all the time. So going out and planting a tray of 50 of these plugs in a nursery bed is like minutes, you know, it's, it's not a big deal. So I've, so far I'm finding that it seems really valuable to do that extra work to know that the plants are going to be there. And uh, my little, the tool shed is always so far away so that I just have a little tool rack here of the things that I always need in the greenhouse that are just designated for the greenhouse. This is my vacuum seeder for um, the farm stuff. And most of the stuff I just plant with a popsicle stick. I just fill everything up, I make the soil mix really nice and moist, and then you just make these little divots and pull out a plant. Um, sometimes you gotta massage the sides to loosen it up a little bit. You pull it out with the root, get it in there, and as long as the soil mix is really moist, even on a hot day, they transplant pretty darn well. Um, some things have a little bit of a problem. These goji don't look super happy, but they have fragile roots. But lots of stuff is amenable to this system. You don't have to be super scared about damaging tiny young plants. I mean, be gentle when you can, but they kind of can take a little bit of handling as a general rule. You gotta feel for some, some plants are really well attached to the root and other ones not so much. But it took me a, quite a while to figure out how to organize the greenhouse. I know <laughs> probably most people think it looks totally crazy and wacky and not organized, but it's actually come a long way. Um, this area is where most of the action happens. So you're here with your with your soil, all the bags of soil we store around, um, I use the McEnroe's potting mix, we store that right around this central area. The heat on this side is no longer used. This is a germination chamber in case, um, for mostly for early stuff, like tomatoes that are gonna be the first planting of tomatoes where the greenhouse is still has no heat, um, but we wanna germinate them. Like these guys, they germinate in that germination chamber and it's just got a little uh, crock pot in there to keep it humid and, and warm. And it's just made out of insulation and the insulation is painted with intumescent paint so that it doesn't burn the greenhouse down. That's very important if you use raw insulation to try to paint it with intumescent paint. Um, but other than that, the space use has become actually pretty efficient. I'm pretty happy with it. The only walkway is really here and on the other side, and then just access around this little island, and pretty much everything else is occupied by plants, either under there germinating, up here growing in the sun, growing in soil, and the next thing I'll do a video about in a little while is under this table here, I'm gonna put an automatic misting system so that in the summer, I'll be able to do lots and lots and lots of softwood cuttings down there. I'm gonna have crates filled with medium with a misting system so that they get indirect sunlight and can all root out down there comfortably in a very humid environment. So I'm pretty excited to get even more layers out of this zone. If you have any questions about the greenhouse, please feel free to ask. It uh, is a very old one, as you can see, it's all made out of wood, but the double poly really makes it pretty darn, it's probably, you know, at least two zones warmer. This is a cool trick. If you have the double poly blowing stuff, uh, I often find the wind rips the, um, the holder out. Let me show you what it looks like. It's supposed to have this type of thing on there. This is the spread. So this is supposed to be attached uh, like that so that the, the air gets blown in and then goes out. And then this kind of is on the, this disc is on the inside of this first layer of plastic. 
and it's supposed to spread it out, but what happens is the wind will jostle it around. And you can see how it's nice and tight on the outside here. That's because there's two layers of poly and it's being inflated in the middle. So it's like a balloon of, of air, which is a really great insulator. And those things always just pop out. I can't do it right. The, the slit that you have to make in the greenhouse inner plastic um, tends to always get bigger. The wind works on it and it pops out. And I've tried many times and I, I just can't get it. So I just took them off and they just blow into a hole there. And, and this thing has withstood way more extreme windstorms and had no problems with inflation. So that's a cool little trick. Just take that thing right off and forget about it. Um, anyway, if there's any other questions, please feel free to add them in the comments. Thank you.